Hey kids, are you ready to have some fun with functions? Because, okay, no, I'm not reading this crap. What do you mean you're not doing it? You need to do it for the project, man. The script is far too bland and cheesy. You know what? I'm gonna do my own script. Okay. Just make it funny, alright? Okay then, kids. Are you excited for Jasper's Fun Chun Japes? Because, yeah, I'm not either, but first we have the uh, exponential function, sure. Ah, the exponential function. So complicated, yet so blissful. <clears throat> the exponential function isn't too hard to explain. Essentially, there are two kinds of exponentials, growth and decay. A growth function sees the y slowly grow, but get procedurally faster in correlation to the x. A decay function is the exact opposite. The y will speedily decrease, but get procedurally slower in correlation to the x. Look at that gradual increases and decreases. You see, a represents the y-intercept and b represents the rate. So when b is less than 1, it will decay, and when b is more than 1, it will grow. Pretty simple stuff. Hmm. This is a bit more complicated. This time, r is the percent increase or decrease. So, for example, let's say hell has 12,000 occupants. Then, with the death of humans gradually increasing, hell's population increases by 15%. You can't just butt in y equals 12,000 parentheses 15 to the power of x. You gotta first divide 15 by 100, which turns into 0.15. But if it has a rate of 0.15, it's decaying like crazy. So you input 0.15 as r, which gives you y equals 12,000, 1.15 to the power of x. Let's find some key features of the already established problem. The y-intercept would be 2,000, and the growth factor would be 115. The asymptote is always y equals 0. The range for this problem is y is greater than 0, as with all problems with the asymptote of y equals 0. And the domain is that weird, fancy, styled r that represents all real numbers. And uh, my source for this is that I made it up. Okay, wrap up this segment, then we got a celebrity guest. Ooh, exciting! Anyhow, I think the easiest part of this is getting the y-intercept. It's literally just given to you 90% of the time. However, the hardest part is definitely graphing it. Just getting every single point ever changing. Is that good enough to wrap it up? Should be. Yeah, that's good. Okay, bring them on. What's up, guys? It's me, Celebrity Jasper. Yeah! Wow, I can't believe I'm having an unscripted, improv interview with Celebrity Jasper about quadratics. Yay! JDs and Lentilman, now for a sophisticated interview with Celebrity Jasper. Introduce yourself, son. Uh, hey guys, it's me, Celebrity Jasper. Yeah, I'm super epic. Oops, I was on mute there. Oh, what a what a wonderful introduction, wasn't that? Okay, let's. Kick this off, shall we? Uh, Celebrity Jasper, why don't you describe the table pattern? Yeah, do that for us, why don't you? Gosh, the, the table pattern. Well, um, you'll know it's a quadratic when you find a turning point. And turning points usually um, are when the y goes up 
stay the same down. Like it goes like an arch, essentially. Because it is an arch. That's what a quadratic is. They're pretty easy to spot. Like, uh, let's say all of these values. Let's take all of these values. Right. So you have one, one, zero. And then two, one. And then three zero. That's a turning point. It can also be the other way, where it goes smaller and then larger. That would be correct. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, let's go around and describe different forms of. An equation. I'll go first. So I'll describe vertex form, which is um, y, if I remember correctly, y equals a. x plus h squared. No. No, no, no. Let me check, actually. We'll cut that from the record, you know? Um, here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so vertex form is y equals a, parentheses, x minus h squared, Plus k. And what it's most useful for is vertexes. Duh. Now, speaking of vertexes, there's something we forgot to go over during the table pattern. Uh, if it opens up, that to open up. It would go down, vertex, up, and then to open down, it would go up, vertex, down. Uh, I think we forgot to include that. So, yeah, I figured I might as well. Oh, yeah, thank you for including that. That's very crucial. Anyways, um, let's see, let's look back at the rubric. Uh, oh yeah, it's your turn. Which one will you share? Well, I think I'll share standard form, which is probably my least favorite one. You might also know it as quadratic form probably the more correct term, the legally correct, but it's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And that is good for uh, y-intercepts because the y-intercept will always be 0, comma, c. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. And the last one I'll go is factored form. And that is y equals a parentheses x minus p parentheses parentheses again x minus q parentheses again. A lot of parentheses. But it's bloody wonderful for finding x-intercepts 
Uh, yeah, but yeah, I think that's it for that. Um, let's see, the rest of Rubik 1, it says, describe the shape of the graph in your preferred method for graphing. Why don't you do that, Celebrity Jasper? Okay, um, so the shape of the graph in my preferred method for graphing, the shape of the graph is sort of like an archway, almost, like, uh, I can't, uh, you know what I mean, yeah, like, think of McDonald's golden arches, but by themselves. And they can also be sometimes upside down. And my preferred method for graphing is probably, I mean, that's a tough one. I think I like to get vertex and then some intercepts. And then I just graph it from there. It's a pretty easy way to go. Yeah, that's, that's a fair way. Okay, so let's show a real-world example of the functions graph. Interpret its y-intercept, x-intercepts, vertex, range, and domain, and context. Holy smokes. That's a lot. Well, I've already cited where I found it from Khan Academy. It's pretty cool. So, we'll, let's read this off, shall we? <clears throat> Chanel has a hundred meters of fencing to build a rectangular garden. The garden's area in square meters as a function of the garden's width, x, in meters is modeled by that. Here. There you go. Okay, so it's measured by width. Okay, so you can just ignore most of it. And a question after what we're shooting for? Let's go for the vertex first, since this is in vertex. I'd consider that to be a smart maneuver myself. Okay. So. Alright, let's do that. So. The, let's get the Y. No, 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 vertex. Let's get the vertex first. It's in, since it's in vertex form. So the vertex would be 25, 625. You can tell because the formula for, uh, it was vertex form it was in, is x minus h and then plus k. So it's 25, 625. Um, and, uh, okay, that was pretty easy. So let's see, what else can we get? We can look at A for the, um, end behavior. That is a negative. So that means, that means that the range, that the range is, y y is y is less than, here, less than or equal to 625. That's your range. Uh, the domain is all real numbers. Why don't you shoot a shot at this, Celebrity Jasper? Oh, oh gosh. Okay. Let's see what's left. 
um, Y intercept, X intercept, and that's it. Okay. So, in vertex form, you're not really given that. So, what you do is you gotta plug in. So, A of X, uh, let's say that. Let's say that X is zero. That would be the Y intercept. So we're just going to pick up where we left off. So we were in the middle of doing the Y intercept before it cut out. Uh, but yeah, let's do that real quick. So you can do that. So that would be negative 25 in there. Power of 2 plus 625. So we're doing PEMDAS. So this times itself. 625 that negative that all cancels out so that's zero you know the cool thing about that is that means the x-intercept is also zero that is very true and very convenient and I think the part that was easiest about quadratics in general is probably getting like the opening down or up, like the direction it opens, because it gives you A every time in every equation. You know? That's a pretty good point. I think the most difficult part, though, is definitely having to get like eat like it convert it into other functions it's that's not a lot of fun it's a pretty good point me thanks for contributing to my growing problem of schizophrenia anytime buddy old pal old me